Getting gray hair is tricky enough in the first place. The last thing that you want to do is waste money on products that damage your hair and make it worse. Let's go over the most common product mistakes that the clients in my salon make to make sure you don't ruin your hair. Using heavy shampoo and conditioner. Right before this, I was answering an email from somebody who asked me why I recommend one Red Ken shampoo above all the other Red Ken shampoos. She was like, does it really matter? Like, what's the difference? That is an amazing question. And the answer is that yes, it absolutely does matter because a lot of shampoos out there are tricking you into thinking that they're really good when they're actually not. And when I say that, I don't mean that the hair care industry is being deceptive at all. What I mean is that they're giving people what they're asking for instead of giving people what they actually need because people don't tend to buy what they actually need. Most women love to get out of the shower and feel their hair and be like, oh my gosh, feel how soft my hair is. That shampoo or that conditioner is absolutely amazing, but that's not what you're actually going for. Yes, your hair should feel soft after you wash it, but they're putting extra ingredients in there to exaggerate the softness. But the thing is, you don't want that extra softness. The extra softness takes extra ingredients that feel good for a little bit and then ruin your hair later. That's because the extra ingredients that give that softness are really heavy. That's the only way to get that effect. And that heaviness is in your hair. So it feels oily, it feels producty, it feels dirty. So you have to wash your hair much sooner than you really should. If you're a hair company, it's kind of a win-win. Like on one hand, we give people what they want. Their hair feels really soft right after the shower, but they have to wash more often, which means they have to buy shampoo more often. So they buy more of our products. It's good for them, not so great for your hair, especially because you have to wash all the time. And we all know that the longer you can go between washes, the healthier your hair is going to be. The only thing shampoo is supposed to do is clear your hair of oil and buildup. The only thing conditioner is supposed to do is moisturize your hair. If they're leaving any extra stuff on there on the outside of your hair, instead of hydrating the inside of your hair, it's no good, it's gonna weigh it down. Lasting, truly soft hair comes from having healthy hair. Not shampoo that leaves a little bit of fake softness on top and then makes you have to wash your hair more often. If you're using a shampoo that says moisturizing or hydrating really big on a label, you'd be shocked how much longer you can go between washes if you find your shampoo soulmate. If you wanna find that, you can check my recommended product list. It's below here in the description. It'll walk you through everything. It even has a hair type quiz to match you to the perfect shampoo. Harmful ingredients. I get a ton of questions about shampoo ingredients. Like, is it okay to use this? Should I stay away from that? I heard this, I heard that. Let's go over what really matters. Sulfates are probably one of the most controversial ingredients in hair products. There's a line out the door of people trying to sell you sulfate-free products that swear that it's bad for your hair, but is it really true? Sulfates are actually in most professional shampoos and there's a really good reason for that. If you ask any serious stylist, they will tell you that sulfates are absolutely amazing for getting your hair clean. So if you struggle to go very long between washes or if you struggle with oily hair or buildup in your hair, sulfates are your best friend. But on the other hand, if you have fun fantasy colors in your hair, like let's say teal, purple, yellow, red, bright colors that wash out really easily, you do not want to use sulfates at all. The reason for that is they're really good cleansers and they're going to help wash out that color much faster. You want to use a sulfate free option for that. But for people with normal hair, blonde hair, anything like that, normal hair color that's not red, purple, green, sulfates are absolutely amazing. There's a few other edge cases where you don't want to use sulfates, like if you have tape-in extensions, if you have keratin treatments, if you have stuff that you know you shouldn't be using sulfates for, your stylist has already told you you know. If your stylist hasn't told you not to use them, good to go. Another ingredient that you'll hear about is parabens. And these usually get lumped together by people who are talking about sulfates. They'll say sulfates and parabens, stay away from those. But if you actually ask people what parabens are and why they're bad for you, they really can't tell you. They can usually only tell you about the sulfates. The reason some brands use parabens is to prevent mold and bacteria and other stuff from growing inside the bottle. If you're using hair products that come from a quality brand using quality ingredients, they're using parabens that are FDA approved and you'll be totally fine. But if you're buying really cheap stuff off Amazon or weird stuff from a weird place, you can get some bad parabens that haven't been used in years. So you actually kinda do need to watch out for these. Just stick to the major brands that are FDA approved 
and you'll be safe. It's also important to realize that the whole ingredient scare thing isn't coming from concerned citizens. It's not like there's a whole bunch of moms in Seattle who are all concerned about, oh my gosh, this happened to us. We have to spread the word. That's not what's going on here. All of this ingredient fear stuff is coming from hair care companies that are trying to scare you away from using other brands into buying them. It's basically a marketing angle where they're saying, hey, the only way to safety is to come and buy it from us because the shampoo that you've been using for years is actually very, very dangerous. But shampoos aren't really dangerous. I've never seen a shampoo that's dangerous and I've used a lot of shampoos. The funny thing is the people who are trying to spread this fear are probably sitting in a nail salon right now, getting their nails done with chemicals that are so harsh that you need extra ventilation by law and you have to wear a mask. Hair products are just not that strong or that dangerous. Heat protection. When I first started making videos about hair, I had no idea that people didn't know how to use heat protection. It's one of the biggest mistakes I made in my life. People would leave comments like, I tried this out and it sucks. Like, what are you talking about? I hate it. When I read these comments, I had absolutely no idea what they were talking about because I had sold heat protection to my clients for years and they absolutely loved it and had great results from it. It took someone making a video reply of them showing me how they were using the products for me to understand where I went wrong. And literally two seconds into that video, I realized how badly I had messed up. And if you ever ask me, this is the most embarrassing moment of my life. I told a bunch of people to use heat protectant without telling them how to use heat protectant. And because of that, a lot of people tried it once, didn't like it, threw it out, and they're never gonna use it again. And their hair is in trouble. So please let me take the five seconds that I should have taken all the way back then to explain how heat protection actually works to get the most out of it. Rule number one is that you do not need to use very much at all. A lot of people are tempted to keep spraying it until they can feel it in their hair. Like, is it doing anything? If I can't feel it, it's not doing anything. But that's not true. It doesn't take very much at all and it should not change the texture of your hair at all. The way you use this is by misting your hair. It's gonna be a very fine mist. It's not gonna be a spray that like chunk goes onto your hair. That means you wanna hold it far enough away so it has time before it hits your head to spread out into a nice fine mist. If you hold it really close up, it's gonna go right onto your hair and it's gonna be all in one spot and it's gonna get crunchy and you're gonna be able to feel it. You do not wanna be able to feel it. Hold it back here and get a fine mist. Another thing that was in that video reply was she only used it on the outside of her head, almost like it was a helmet. It is not a helmet. You need all of your hair to be protected. So what you're gonna do is lift up the hair and spray it underneath. You wanna get all of the layers top to bottom, not just the outside of your hair. Now, one last thing that you need to do before you're done is you have to brush this through your hair with a wet brush. That will spread it out evenly and make sure it doesn't give any texture to your hair. Your hair should feel totally normal by the time you're done. You should not feel like you can feel any product in there. Believing the label. Hair commandment number eight, never trust the label on your products. This is one of the biggest problems I have with the hair care industry and the way they operate right now. The labels on your products lie for a bunch of different reasons, but the number one reason is that they're actually an advertisement. They want you to just buy the product. For example, let's take this cheap, terrible shampoo and read the label really quickly. First of all, it says Pro-V to make you think that professionals use it, I promise you. Hair professionals are not using Pantene from the drugstore. Number two, it says Nutrient Rich Lather. Effortless detangling and lasting shine. If these labels actually told the truth, everyone would have had really amazing hair a long time ago and it would have been easy. So these things exaggerate their claims. Honestly, it's not a huge deal. Every product on any market tries to make itself sound better than it really is. Not a huge deal. But what I really, really have a problem is outright deception of just lying to you. The most common damaging lie that product labels make is when they say they have heat protection when they really don't. They know that if they put heat protection on the label, one of you guys is gonna be like, oh, that's nice, I can take a shortcut and not have to use heat protection and still protect my hair. So then you go and use heat on your hair with only this to protect it because the label made you feel like you were safe. But it's not safe because on a scale of one to 10, the heat protection this gives is like a one. Your hair is not safe. It'll get destroyed right through this. So a couple weeks into it, you're in a bad spot with damaged hair and you're like, I don't know what I did wrong. I guess heat protection just doesn't work. It does work, this is just lying to you. It's not heat protection. 
there's only two types of legitimate heat protection. Number one is a blow dry cream with built in heat protection. Use it when you're blow drying your hair or if you use an iron, you need something a little bit stronger and that's a thermal heat protectant. Anything other than these two products will let damage happen. Don't trust them using way too much. Labels also lie by telling you to use way too much product way too often. So you go through it really quickly and have to buy more and they make more money. Hair commandment number one, less is more. Your hair will always look better and be healthier if you use the least amount of product possible to get the result that you're looking for. For instance, this leave-in conditioner tells you to use it to freshen up your style every day. So a lot of people see this and say, hmm, I'm gonna use heat every day and use this to freshen up my style. It's a terrible idea. Number one, using this every day just results in a ton of product being added to your hair. It's gonna make it feel gross and producty. And number two, if you use this on dry hair, it'll give your hair a terrible, like crunchy texture. You only wanna use this on wet hair and then brush it through so you don't get that texture. The funny thing is, this is actually my favorite product of all time. If you use it correctly, it will completely transform your hair. It is amazing, but don't listen to directions. Even the best product used incorrectly will make your hair feel terrible. You have to remember that these labels are not there to help you. They're there for the hair care brands to make money and that's it. If you wanna know how to use any type of product, I have a 45 second tutorial on every product category. Check it out, it's really easy, really simple. Blow dry creams are an absolutely amazing and essential product. If you're blow drying your hair without using one of these, you are literally sabotaging your own hair. But there's a big warning on these and that's that most people are using way too much. And if you use way too much, say it with me, your hair is going to be heavy and producty and feel gross. Just like with any other product, you wanna use the least amount you possibly can to get the result that you're looking for. More is never better in hair. I hear a lot of people using like a dime sized amount or a quarter sized amount. That is just way too much. That is an insane amount of cream to use. It's gonna make your hair feel absolutely gross. If you have like shoulder-ish length hair, you really only wanna be using about a pea sized amount. That's much more manageable. It's gonna come out way better. Now, if you have super long hair or super thick hair, you're gonna need to use more. That's totally fine. Just go by, if your hair is twice as long, use twice as much. But almost everyone is just going to be using a pea sized amount. You're gonna put it in your palm, rub your palms together, and then you're gonna start applying it to your ends at the very bottom. Your ends are the oldest, most delicate part of your hair. They need the most help, so most of it on your ends. Then come up to your mids, and at the very end, when you only have a little bit, little bit just shining on your hands, no droplets or goo at all, just a little bit on there, then you can go over the top of your head. One little trick that I love to use is a lot of people have little baby hairs around their hairline that tend to misbehave when they blow dry. If you, at the very end, just kind of go over over them with your fingers without very much product at all just to get them in line they'll behave much easier and it'll look much better all you have to do next after you're applying it is brush your hair out with a wet brush and start blow drying hairspray one thing that absolutely makes my skin crawl is that a lot of people use hairspray in a way that actually makes their hair worse. A long time ago, when I first opened my salon, me and the stylist had a huge debate where most of the stylists thought that the best way to use hairspray was the way that you normally see it used, where you spray it all over and you kind of, you flip the hair up and you spray it all over the place and you use a lot. Then there was the other side where there was only like Two of us who said that it was best to only use like a little bit of hairspray and not flap the hair up at all. Now, even today in my salon, when this type of debate comes up, it always goes to a test. Even if I've seen the results, we do the test again because it's amazing to be able to see firsthand exactly what happens when you do both strategies. So on this test, we did the model's hair and on one side, we put like a ton of hairspray the way that you normally see it, flipping the hair up all throughout the hair. And then on the other side, we did just a little bit of hairspray. And then we took videos of the hair on day two and three to see how it held up. Here's the video that we took on day three to see which side held up better. And as you can see, it was actually the side that had less hairspray that held up better and had more hold to it. And that's the exact opposite of what you would think. You would think the more hairspray means more hold, but it's actually not true. Here's why. 
Hairspray works best when you only use one coat. If you add a second and third and fourth coat, it actually works against the hairspray as you can see here in the test that we did. The first coat of hairspray actually binds to the hair and strengthens the hair to make it stronger so it doesn't fall out. But if you do a second and third and fourth layer, you're not actually adding any more support to the style. You're just adding weight. So it's bringing the style down and pulling it out. So when I'm training a new stylist, the rule of thumb is that you only use six seconds of hairspray on any one section. So you do on the right side, six seconds, six seconds on the left side, six seconds on the back. And honestly, you don't, don't spray just top down here. That's just gonna make your hair feel gross. Left, right, back, six seconds maximum. That's how you're gonna get the best hold. Using products incorrectly. Two years ago, I had a friend come to me and he's like, hey, it's my wife's birthday next week. She's focusing on getting really healthy hair this year. Can you help me out? So I'm like, sure, come on down to my salon and we'll figure something out for her. He shows me a couple pictures so we can identify her hair type. We match products to her hair type, get her a nice little Trinity box. She's gonna be set, her hair is gonna be super healthy. He calls me about a week later and he says, Chris, this stuff is drying her ends out. I thought you were gonna give me the good stuff. What happened? Now I made a huge mistake here and that's that I never told her how to use the actual products. If you buy a product from my salon, we'll do like a little demo, a little tutorial to show you exactly how to use it so you get the results that you want. But she never got this because she never actually came in and I was a dummy and completely forgot to text the instructions to my friend. So as soon as I remember that, I nod my head like, yeah, that's totally my fault. Have her do this, this, and this to make sure it never happens again. And guess what? He texts me the next day and he's like, Chris, thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. Everything's amazing. She absolutely loves it. This happens a lot when people are used to using cheap shampoo. You can use cheap shampoo however you want. It doesn't really matter because it doesn't actually do anything. But when you use expensive shampoo, when you use professional quality shampoo, it absolutely matters how you use it. And if you use it on your ends, you are going to dry them out. You have to make sure that you only apply professional shampoo up by your scalp and roots. That's where the oil is. That's the only place you need it. If you apply it down here, it strips your natural oil really bad idea. This might sound really, really basic, but please help me spread the word. Shampoo only goes on your roots and scalp. That's it. All right. Thank you so much for hanging out today. I hope you learned something. And remember, if you're going to buy a hair product, please check out my recommended product list first. Figure out your hair type by using the quiz. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good one. Take care.